story of the the customer what this customer did so um the title of this is i can't say exactly what it is now because i haven't done it yet but the title of this will be you won't believe what this customer did and i still can't believe what this customer did myself so so our citroen c1 is in guys i've come in this morning to it so let's have a quick look around it you'll get to see it same time as me I've, it's dirty for starters but looking at the corner of the bumpers they're good there good there so that's all right uh, this bumper seems pretty free of dents stuff like that we've got some slimer goo there for some reason i don't know what that's all about um green mirror that's going to come up all right tires wise we've got oh good tire there plenty of tread on that don't like the wheel trims though i've got i kept hold of i always do this I've had so many C1s, I've kept hold of random trims off of it, so I've got genuine ones, I've got three genuine ones somewhere. Welcome back to Chops Garage, guys. What we're going to get on today is we're going to get on that Citroen C1 we picked up the other day. that I've test driven and made sure I'm happy with the drive on it. We're going to get in and, and give it a good uh, valet. We're going to sort out the scratch on the rear bumper. We're going to replace the horrible aftermarket wheel trims. Um, I've got a set of wheel trims that I've accumulated over the time I've been trading. I've done a lot of these C1s and I've had a lot of cars where just one or two wheel trims were bad and I've replaced those but I've kept the bad ones so now I've got a full set of four bad ones well three and I bought one new one from eBay so we're going to show you how to refurb those wheel trims so we can get those on the car so it looks exactly as it should do original out of the box we're going to give it a really good clean then we're going to do its photo shoot so let's get cracking so we're taking 80 grit on the DA and uh, sanded down to the bottom of all those deep scratches now obviously 80 grit is too coarse to be painting onto so what we'll do next is go down to a 240 and then a 400 so they're all uh, 400 grit now so you can see it's a lot smoother you can't see the sanding marks anymore what we have to do now is go over it all with an 800 grit scotch pad because if you paint onto these shiny bits here without keying it up um, it's, your paint's going to flake straight off so we have to basically get in all here and it, there's no quick way of doing it just get in there with a scotch pad and just key it all up so you haven't got you basically want to get rid of all the shine so that your paint has got something to to stick well to we've got one coat of filler primer on just about to put the second one on so primer's all done just going to do a dust coat of the color so very lightly dust it over first before then putting the heavier coats on you need to do this otherwise you want a tacky surface for it to grip to. Right, time for the second coat, guys. This will be a heavier coat and we'll be making more of a point of getting in the nooks and crannies. And then it'll be uh, time for a bit of lacquer. So we've got even coat of the silver on. Now it's time for lacquer. Again, I'm using up what I've got. I've got little sort of half bits, third cans of lacquer kicking around. So I'll use them first. Uh, as per with the rest of the paint, we'll put a dust coat of lacquer on first to make sure that we've got a grab coat. And with these cans, you can actually adjust the nozzle there. So we'll put a dust coat on them and then we'll lay the th heavy coat. We'll probably only give them one coat of lacquer, to be honest. I don't see them really need more than that. Right, wet coat. Last coat for the uh, trims. Looking all right so far. We'll see where it goes with the last coat of lacquer. So we take about a scuff on the rear bumper, now that the wheel trims are painted. Um, it appears it was just bad paint and it started to flake a little bit so I've uh, really feathered out the edges we've done 400 and 800 taking it out to about here we don't need a huge amount of blending room um, because the whites are a bit easier to blend and we're not using a lacquer and a color just a, a ready mix 1k of the lacquer and color together all in 1k I do that on the whites because you can get away with it on the whites not too much of a problem so um, we're just going to mask up this area here, cover up the wheel, and then we can get the paint on. We need to put some filler primer on this first, or some primer on this. It's pretty smooth, but we just need to get some primer on that before we go any further with the colour side of things. So we've got filler primer on, and um, that means we can then get the colour on next. I said we'll blend up around here. Right, something's happened here on my last coat, guys. I'm not quite sure what's going on. So as I always tell you, leave it alone. So I'm going to check it out in the morning. It's kind of crazy and cracking up here. Something's reacting with something it's not happy with. The rest of it down here is fine. But up here, it's not a happy bunny. 
So we've got the wheel trims back on this morning. The Honda Silver is not quite as bright as I'd like, but I'll live with it. Let's, let's not go crazy here. Um, certainly a lot better than those cheapy aftermarket ones. So um, they're back on. The paint on the back this morning doesn't... Oh, I must get, must get in and sort this clip out here. Um, paint isn't quite as bad as I thought it was this morning. It's only going to take a little bit of flatting back. The biggest problem really is this is the proper white. This has been repainted at some time and then Marlies are giving me the proper white again. So I'm going to have to do a bit more blend in there. Up here I think there's probably a screw missing in here or I can put a screw in just to hold that in tight. These clips over age when you take bumpers on and off they get worse and worse and worse. So uh, just a little screw up there I'll probably hide that in nice and tightly. So what we're going to do is because I want to leave that for another 24 hours before I start tackling it but I want the car up for sale is we're going to give the interior a clean we can give the outside a wax now that we've given it the because we already cleaned the outside thoroughly didn't we so we'll give it a wax now give the interior a clean and get photos up so that we can have the car up for sale ready for the weekend i don't even think anybody's like to come and see it to the weekend that gives me a chance to then flat that paint before um they come and have a look so yeah let's get clean up there isn't an awful lot to do i think the interior is really clean anyway and obviously we gave this a thorough cleaning so what we'll do now is just give it a uh, a polish and a wax. Let's get cracking. So I've been playing around with the corner of this bumper because it was sticking out, the top edge was sticking out here. I didn't like it at all. So um, I've got underneath it, I've taken the clip out and I can see that the clip is broken and someone's still just put it back in again. So that this should actually have two edges here that sort of sandwich this edge of the bumper and hold it in nice and tightly. Um, despite what Pete says, I'm not going to put expanding foam in and then hold it there until it sets. <laughs> I've ordered a new clip, but for the moment, I'm gonna put the clip back on um, and uh, just do it as it is, because obviously in the photos from a little bit distance, it's not so noticeable and I get the photos up and live. But um, no, I mean, for me, I can't send it out the door. It was sort of sitting like that. And every time I walk by the car, it's gonna do my nutting. Um, She's clearly had a bit of paint on the rear bumper, like I always say to you, just because a car's not a cat car doesn't mean it's never had a scrape or a bit of paint or whatever, and someone's just done, just wang that back on there again, not worried about the fact they've got a nasty panel gap. So yeah, eight quid I think this part is, so uh, it'll be here on Friday, but for the moment I'll get it together, clean it up, and then get some photos done. A lot of you have been asking what the black stuff is, the stuff I use to revive the blacks on the car. It's um, Auto Smart and it's called High Shine. I think it's called High Shine. Um, you get it in a big jug and just apply it with a brush and wipe it off. But I'll tell you what, it is really good stuff. I put it on my 106 Rally Dash, it completely faded. I gave it three or four coats and it brought it back like new. So, yeah, highly recommended stuff. Um, I'll try and find a link for it and put it down below. So she's had a full clean up, all the blacks are glossed, she's ready for a photo shoot. I've actually had a phone call on this. When I buy cars on BCA, what I do is grab a quick picture of the car or I go and get a stock image from Google and put it up for sale on my Motors account and on my website and on my Facebook page even before the car's in and start to generate some interest, say you can come in stock. So I actually had a call when I was part way through cleaning this for someone that wants to see it tomorrow. So fingers crossed on that, but I'm still going to do the photo shoot. Even if I've sold a car, I do the photo shoot and put it up and then pull it down a little bit later. Reason being, I want to know where the market is. I want to see how many responses I get uh, on that advert. And obviously I can build up also a bit of a backlog of people that want cars. Um, so yeah, she's come out really well, as you can see. The bodywork is really good on this car. Um, inside, she come out really clean, absolutely mint. Nothing to talk about inside in terms of any marks or 
um, problems like that, it's really mint inside. Body work has come up. A lot of these C ones you get a little bit of rust along the front edge here, things like that. This is really clean. Yeah, I mean, other than that little bit I've done on the bumper there, she came out of the box really clean. Like I say, I've got to put that clip on the other side, but I have pulled it in tighter for the moment um, with a little self tapper on the on the old clip. It's pulled it in a bit tighter, but every time I walk by this car, if I being able to see the front edge of that will bother me. So. I'll be still be putting that on when it arrives. So let's get a photo shoot done on it now. Get her up for sale. I say I'm gonna put it up for 2995. I think Auto Trader says 3185, something like that. Uh, but I'll put it up for 2995 under that Magic 3K mark, but then I'll be firm on the price, I think. So let's get her up. So the people came to see the C1, um, but it turned out that they were gonna be traveling in France quite a bit. Um, and they're slightly older people, absolutely lovely people, nicest people in the world. Um, and they caught sight of the Micra and they had a Micra before and the only reason they were getting a new car is because their old Micra died and um, they spotted the Micra we've been out for a test drive in it and a deal's been done on that which is nice because it has been sitting around for a little bit the little Micra it's a fantastic little car it drives absolutely perfectly it's got low miles it's got great service history um, I just think it was a bit bland for most people 3195 we've sold that for but i'm putting a new windscreen in it and a brand new mot on it which i think that is good value for money i could have come under the 3k mark but then i wouldn't be able to do those things to it so um sorry i'm not advertising in coke i just happened to have it in my hand and um yeah so i still think they got a good deal on it so um nice to see it goes to nice people i think it's the perfect car for them it's the absolute right choice over the c1 i've no um worries the c1 will sell i didn't actually put it up for sale last night so i must do that now um I had some challenges with the Peugeot, the rally. Someone came to look at the rally last night because I put it up for, I put it up for seven thousand nine hundred ninety-five pound. I don't know why I really put it up for sale because I don't actually want to sell it. But um, I bought it inside to check a few things over it because I've not been happy with the amount of noise from the engine bay and sort of lurching when I take off. I put a new drive shaft on it, um, but I didn't cure it. So I had a look, and it turns out the engine mount. On the right on the uh, driver's side is completely shot so I've got a new one of those and more scarily having a look at that it turns out the cam belt was loose um, it appears that when someone helped me out because I don't do cam belts they tension the tensioner the wrong way they kind of tensioned it up rather than down so I'm counting myself as a very lucky boy at the moment that that I've driven that and done 7,000 revs on it I'm counting myself a very lucky boy that that didn't actually implode. Pete saved the day and sorted it out. So we'll excuse him for the, um, what was it he tried to do, wanted to do yesterday with expanding foam? We'll excuse that now because basically he came and sorted out the uh, the rally. So I'm looking for, I'm gonna get the engine mount on that, but I've also noticed now, getting up on the ramp that one of the wheel cylinders is leaking, so I've gotta change that. But I really wanna drive that home tonight because the sun is blazing. So I'm trying to find time to crack on it, but this did take about two hours, this sale. Um, but we took it to the house um, they tried it in the driveway, we went for a bit of dual carriageway as well as normal roads. I've got no problems with doing that at all with people. At the end of the day, you've got to make sure you're 100% happy. If they're spending that amount of time in the car, there's no way they can say later on that um, they didn't know what they were buying. So um, we're all happy. On to the story of the the customer, what this customer did. So um, the title of this is, I can't say exactly what it is now because I haven't done it yet, but the title of this will be you won't believe what this customer did and I still can't believe what this customer did myself. So a few of you will remember me selling a red Ford K on a 2013. I'll insert an image of it now. Now this is the one we did the crash repair work on, put back together again, and it's the one that a couple of people were fighting over having when it was actually finished. Once lockdown ended, we got a load of phone calls on it, didn't, didn't we? We had a load of people ringing up, wanting to, to uh, have this Ford KA. Um, now, the guy came along, absolutely lovely guy, bought, bought the car, three month, 3,000 mile warranty from me. And I'm talking about he bought it, what did he buy it, a week ago? I think it's about a week ago he bought the car. So he came in yesterday, and um, that's gotta be get, got in and cleaned up today because that's been picked up tomorrow. So yeah, he came in yesterday and he said, I've got a couple of problems with the car. So I was like, okay, what are the problems? He said, well, the air conditioning's not working. I said, okay, no problem at all. Um, he said, yeah, and um, I've had it regassed. I said, sorry, you've, you've had it regassed. He said, yeah, I took it off and had it somewhere gassed. I said, but if the air conditioning wasn't working, 
how didn't come you didn't come back and see me? He went, Well, you know, it's an old car. Um, the air conditioning wasn't working, probably needing regassing. I took it out that way. So it's really my responsibility to sort. And I was kind of kind of gobsmacked to be honest, because those of you who watch my channel um will know, I may well insert in this video, some of the previous warranty claims I've had for some of the most random small things on older cars. Bear in mind this was a 2013 with 50,000 miles. I've had people claim me off 2007 cars for the most random small things. So he said, so yeah, the air con's not working. I said, and they said, I've had it regassed. I said, well, why didn't you come back and see? Well, as I said, he said, that wasn't your problem. I took the car out as it was. And I've just never heard this attitude from someone before. <laughs> it's just, it's just absolutely gobsmacked me. And he said, I said, okay. He said, yeah, the trouble is when it was regassed, it still isn't working. I said, so the guys, um, the guys told me that um, it's not getting power to it. I said, okay. He said, yeah, they discovered it while they were fitting the clutch. I said, sorry, fitting the clutch? He said, yeah, I had a new clutch put in it. I said, but there was nothing wrong with the clutch in the car. It worked fine. I said, and if you were concerned about the clutch, how come you didn't come back and see me? Because I always tell people, if you've got any concerns, you come back and see me. Any of you who see my videos, you know I don't muck around when it comes to warranty. It's far more important to me to have a happy customer and recommendation than it is to save a few quid. So I said, what were you doing having a clutch fitted? He said, well, I drove it around a bit and I decided I didn't quite like where the bite was on the clutch. Now, I'd driven that car a number of times myself and there wasn't actually anything wrong with the clutch. Uh, I didn't feel about a bit high at all. Again, because as you guys know from my videos, if I was worried about the clutch, it would be in there and he'd be having a new clutch. Um, I said, so, you know, wh why, why didn't you come back and see me about the clutch and if you had a concern? He said, well, the clutch worked. He said, I bought the car with a working clutch and it worked fine. He said, it was my preference. I didn't like where the bite point was, so I didn't think it was your problem. It was my problem, so I paid someone to fit a new clutch to it. And I just absolutely have never come across this attitude before. I mean, what a brilliant, what a brilliant mindset in this in this world we live, where everything is everybody else's fault and everybody else is responsible. This guy's basically saying, "No, James sold me the car as it was. It ran fine. It worked fine. I want these things doing. It's not reasonable for me to expect them to be done on a car of this age. I want to get them done myself." What an absolute star! I just, I just couldn't. I just thought it was such a brilliant attitude. So yes, yeah, so I said to him, "I said, look, at the end of the day." I said, I would, you know, I'd have done that for you probably at cost. If it was worrying you, I'd have done it for you at cost. And you like to say it was working, I'd have done it for you at cost. But he said, no, 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 no. I, you know, um, I don't expect you to do that at all. I said, I said, well, can I contribute something towards it? Can I, you know, can I at least pay for the regassing of the air con? He said, no, that's not your responsibility at all. The the the, the gas. He said, again, I decided to have that done. I said, well, let's have a take a look at this air con now in traditional style. The garage that had done it. I told him that everything under the sun had broken on the car, it needed a new aircon motor, it needed this, that and the other. They hadn't plugged the sensor in. The sensor was out on the aircon. The one that tells it is, uh, that the pressure is correct and it's okay for the aircon to run. Literally two seconds, put the plug back in again, aircon worked fine. So he was well happy about that. But what an attitude to have, what a totally diamond geezer. I've just, I just haven't come across that in this industry before, that kind of like, that acknowledgement that I'm buying an old car, I'm not buying a brand new car, and its actual functionality in terms of its running driving is correct. And if I want anything else doing to make it more like a new car, that's really down to me. So um, put down below, do you, do, what do you think I should do for this geezer? I want to do something for this geezer. I think he was um, an absolute star. I think that was you know, such a great attitude to have towards it. I want to do something for him. Put me a little comment down below. What do you think I should do for this guy? Or comment below if you think, I'm nuts, and at the end of the day, I wasn't responsible in the first place, so I shouldn't be putting any more money into it. Um, but I just feel like that deserves recognition. Yeah, so bang us a comment down below. What we're going to do now quickly is just go and look at my computer because I have just made probably the worst purchasing decision yet in this business, despite knowing that it was completely the wrong purchasing decision. I've still done it. So let's go and have a quick take a look at what I've won recently. 